Thank you, and especially for reminding me of the leaky bucket analogy. So I think these are the four or five major challenges. How massive amount of subsidy that is being promised? Would you do it in other job fees? This will generate close to 2.5 million jobs. It's great to have Mr. Saurabh Kumar with us. Saurabh and I go back a long, long time. We have worked together. And he has since been the green energy man of India, bringing LED bulbs into our homes through the various programs uh, which have been launched by the company that he used to head, Energy Efficiency Services Limited or EESL. He, has, he is now heading the Global Energy Alliance for People and Planet here in India. And Saurabh, it's a pleasure to welcome you here. Thank you, sir. It's always a great pleasure to interact with you. In fact, I owe a lot of what you have given, uh, told the audience about me uh, to you. You have been a mentor for a long time, but thank you very much for inviting me to this talk show. Thanks. Saurabh, you know, as we move ahead and our goal is to take solar to communities, where do you think the major challenges lie? I think two or three things which are which are absolutely necessary. And, and to me, uh, providing solar rooftop solutions mm -hmm. along with equipments is, is really the kind of just energy transition that we uh, need to have in a, in a climate-constrained world. And therefore, it is not just the renewable energy. You have to also package it with energy efficiency, uh, particularly lighting and cooling fans and, and uh, uh, bulbs. And and that's because if you have include efficient fans and efficient uh, uh, lighting, which are the two main things in a low uh, income community uh, for as far as energy use is concerned, then you reduce the overall requirement of, of the solar panels, mm -hmm. which means it, it reduces the cost to either the community or whosoever else is funding that whole thing. So I see this as a movement towards just energy transition by combining both energy efficiency and, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, if I may be allowed to use your uh, uh, cliche that you mentioned many, many years ago, is that if you have a leaking bucket, you can never fill it up. So therefore, it's incredibly invaluable that, you, uh, that we have energy efficiency as part of the mix when we look at a whole community energization or, or empowerment. Thank you, and especially for reminding me of that leaky bucket analogy. Uh, I think today, more than any uh, time for that leaking bucket analogy is very important to us because oh, it does matter that if the size of the bucket is this or this. So as we look at the energy efficiency and renewable energy programs together, we have seen them happen at a household level, we have seen them happen at a village level. What will it take to upscale it so that all communities in the country, all communities in a, in a geographical jurisdiction have access to the benefits of energy from solar? I think uh, we uh, need not go very far to figure out what it takes. Uh, we have to just look at what is happening as we speak in India. The 10 million uh, solar uh, uh, rooftop scheme that was announced by mm -hmm. the Honorable Prime Minister, I think takes into account three, four major challenges and how it overcomes those challenges. And and, and to my mind, these challenges are a lack of information. Uh -huh. And therefore, you see a massive outreach campaign on this national rooftop. Uh, number two is is the transaction costs. Okay. Uh, if I am an individual owner of a, of a roof, I have to go through multiple layers of approvals and that I, I presume any other country will have the same thing. Number three is access to finance. If mm -hmm. I was a small, mm -hmm. small town uh, SME or a, or a low income group, I don't have that ability uh, to, to uh, get financed at a term that, that I can have solar uh, rooftop. Fourthly is where are the vendors? I don't know. Right. I don't know how, how, how to reach them. They don't have enough um, uh, credi uh, credibility on myself as a, as a house owner and my ability to pay them over a 10, 15 year period. So I think these are the four or five major challenges. How this scheme has very effectively made sure that all these challenges are taken care of. 
is by a very very elaborate digital backend platform mm. that is being mm. developed mm. and we are extremely proud that uh, MNRE has chosen Jia to help them develop this platform this platform is a single window clearance for everything starting from registration to understanding how much is your potential of your rooftop then getting you approvals uh, uh, sitting in the comfort of your home connecting you with vendors and financiers okay. and finally a uh, amount of uh, a massive amount of subsidy that is being promised will also flow through the portal so and once the installation is complete what this platform will do is to monitor mm -hmm. your your consumption also whether you, if you are if you're pushing electricity back to the grid uh, are you getting paid on time so i think what is needed is a, a kind of a digital platform to scale it up right and and and, and bring it all together uh, bring it all together so you said that as the Global Energy Alliance for People and Planet, or GAP, you are helping MNRE do this. Would you do it in other geographies? So, in fact, uh, uh, that is precisely our interest in this whole program, uh -huh. is that, A, we demonstrate success here. Now, this is very much exportable to any country. In fact, this is what we call a scalable solution. This can go to Nigeria, this can go, mm -hmm. with, of course, there will be tweaks. Tweaks, which are national, yeah. But our aim is to basically take this once we uh, make this and run this effectively in India make it available to any other country including through ISA member countries if they are willing to uh, take that we are very happy to provide support and make sure that we uh, use this to scale up uh, rooftop solar in, in every which so, that we can. Uh, let me follow up on this so what is it that you think should be the next steps in enabling this. So what we are doing is we are we. It is not just the solar rooftop program, right? right. And again, uh, under your leadership at uh, the Bureau of Energy Efficiency and also later on in ESL, I must say India has done extremely well when it comes to energy efficiency, clean energy. There are many many uh, uh, programs that have been successfully uh, been, uh, implemented, and I'll name a few. One is the Perform Achieve and Train mechanism mm -hmm. that we evolved. In, in, uh, which is a very unique program. Not many countries have been able to uh, do this program. The other is your uh, the Solar Energy Corporation of India, how it was set up, how it aggregated demand for solar, and from where we were in 2010-11, where we were about 17 rupees per yeah. unit. Today, right. we are at 245. Now, these are all things that can be done elsewhere in the world. So, we are setting up a, a, a entity called GRACE, and something that we have been discussing with ISA, to have a partnership with this, uh, with us on this, what we want to do is to have these scalable solutions incubated through this entity, mm -hmm. and then this entity takes this to a, a, a ISA member country or anybody else, right, and helps them replicate success uh, by making the changes that are needed, so that uh, the real fruits of of uh, cost reductions and and uh, and a clean energy revolution also happens in that uh, geography. So this is very interesting because what it tells is a real nuts and bolts way of taking solar to people's homes. What are the kinds of capacity building? What is the kind of skills that is needed in order to sustain this? So if you, if you let me give you some numbers that we have been able to put together for rooftop. If, mm -hmm. we, uh, if we succeed in the next one or two years, to do 10 million rooftops as a nation. Uh, it will install a minimum of 30 gigawatts of uh, solar rooftop uh, in, in, in the entire country. This will generate close to 2.5 million jobs. Right. And, and these jobs start from uh, uh, installation, maintenance, and so on and so forth. So yeah, jobs which haven't existed. Uh, they didn't exist at this moment. And even today, we need at least 200,000 installation agencies in the country. So you need to A, skill people in, mm -hmm. in solar. You have to train them on installation of these uh, rooftops. You have to train them on maintenance of these rooftops. And, and uh, uh, so, so sort of this adds one more wrinkle to this, which is getting the financial investment that those companies need. The guys who are going to maintain it, those companies will need resources. Who will invest in them? So again, because there is there is a, 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 a element of revenue that is going to come up, uh, and and again, I'll go back to our, your first point on what is why energy efficiency is needed. So mm -hmm. let's take 
a small low uh, income um, household that has a requirement of 3 kilowatt of solar uh, which is a panel cost about 1 1 and a half uh, lakh rupees government is giving 78000 as subsidy right. now if the consumption is let's say x amount today if you include energy efficiency mm -hmm. that energy efficiency will reduce the consumption by almost 30 to 40% correct or maybe 50% if mm -hmm. you use vldc fans and it, right now with that kind of reductions I as a house owner can then sell electricity to the grid and make money. If you are able to monetize that revenue stream, there is a business case for for a maintenance company to come in because it, it uh, that visibility of revenues is there. And the importance of the digital platform is that you can track those revenues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can escrow that revenue. So in fact, not just uh, not just the 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 panel. I I, I think uh, not just the maintenance. The entire panel can be monetized. And and the service. So, by. in other words, this becomes an opportunity for investors in the solar Absolutely. area to move their resources into. Absolutely. Yes. What has been traditionally the greatest challenge to investors who have wanted to come into this area? So, if you if you look at the uh, the earlier scheme, uh -huh. which was launched in I think 2016 or 17, there was a ambition of 40 gigawatts uh, on rooftop solar. With a lavish spread of subsidy across uh, spectrum, where we are today is about eight or nine gigawatts right. RGB mm -hmm. on commercial and industrial consumption. Yeah, commercial and so industrial. What are, so again, those three four issues that I yeah. uh, number one lack of information. B, I don't I don't no, know who, who what to do. Yeah. Number three, the uh, uh, discounts are not very happy with yeah. with uh, so therefore complexities around getting the requisite approvals. And even if I get everything done. Uh, I don't know which is the which best is, person, and yeah. and and therefore I will not get a finance. I'm going to ask you an unfair question, with and that is, how on earth will we please the distribution companies? So I think there, there it's it's not a question of being pleased. It's again an uh, issue of education to them, because this is going to help them more than anything else. Mm -hmm. We are looking at a residential sector. As you know, a residential sector is all cross subsidized. So the moment you you reduce their energy consumption, uh, your sub cross subsidy burden also goes down. Particularly when you are looking at heavily subsidized consumers who are who are not paying enough. So the challenge that we face and what we hear again, time and again is that solar comes on to people, particularly who have the money power in their pockets. More importantly, they have access to a computer and the internet. And they have a roof above their heads on which the solar panels can be installed. Are we favoring the haves against the have-nots? I think the, the, the scheme, again, in the Indian context, the scheme very clearly does not. Mm -hmm. If you see, the scheme caps the subsidy to a level of 5 kilowatt system only. So anybody who's doing a 10 or 15 kilowatt system. Which or is, 6, or actually, which, which is the yeah. threshold for a air conditioner. So which means that they will not get a subsidy beyond what a 5 kilowatt system gets. So this is this is something that, uh, uh, and, and I said, because of the enabling nature of these, of, of, the, of the whole uh, 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 program, I think it's not favoring anyone mm -hmm. for that matter. It is. It is. Uh, uh, it, it's. It's an equal opportunity kind of. So, in other words, it is possible to design a nationwide program Absolutely. which focuses as much on the have-nots as on the haves. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Uh, where do you think in India currently, given the kinds of preparation that this country has already had because of the large solar program, where is it that the challenges lie now? So, I think the challenges here. Number one is. Do we have enough installation agents? Agencies, okay. Is someone working on training and upskilling these people? Right. So upskilling of the guys who will work with the installation agencies is important. Absolutely. Number two, sir, if you look at what has been our last year's capacity addition in renewables, that mm -hmm. is about 18 gigawatts mm -hmm. total. Everything together, uh, utility plus uh, decentralized renewable. If this program has to be implemented in two years with a 40 gigawatt of capacity, you need an additional 20 gigawatt. Right, every year. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm sure someone must be working on this, but these are real challenges. 
And third is how do you make sure that the investment uh-huh. is coming in is ring fenced and it is protected because you will need lot l- large volumes of investments coming. Correct. With a with a counterparty being uh, a distribution company and particularly you have ten million disaggregated people having a, a, a power purchase agreement with the the distribution company. Some sort of a, a digital platform Black has to be yeah. a platform has to be set up so that we manage this whole contract over a period of times. This becomes important because I can't expect a distribution company to have ten thousand extra contract gifts. It can piggyback them onto existing contracts, but that, as you said, requires a digital platform to enable it to happen. Where do you think the larger issue of decentralized energy or universal energy access is going, not just in India, but across the world? I think in India, it is just starting, if you really ask me. Mm-hmm. Although there have been efforts in the past, including the rooftop solar or the PM Kusum, which is agriculture right. solarization. But success has not uh, come in the scheme. It's only now we see things moving for mm-hmm. it. Since uh, Rajasthan is, has already issued LOAs for about 4 gigawatt of agriculture solarization, so has Maharashtra, uh, UP is intending to. In Africa, as you are aware, uh, this is a, a World Bank and African Development Bank initiative, uh, Mission 300. Mission 300 essentially looks at electrify like 300 million people. households uh, over the next six years. And yet again, decentralized renewables is going to play a very critical role. Right. And, right. uh, and the more we are able to digitize this whole process, and that's why our experiment in India mm-hmm. is critically important for a Mission 300 uh, that, that is being launched. And, and uh, GIAP globally is a, is a, is a partner of both the World Bank and the African Development Bank, and we are trying to put together a, a TA facility that will help uh, create these these uh, small little projects, which can then be funded by the banks. But in such a case, don't you think that the community itself, the community that uses the energy, they are themselves very important in as much as what their expectations are, in as much as they understand what the needs would be for growth to occur, and actually to ensure that they are connected to energy efficient devices. Absolutely, sir. And that's why as a part of the TA, mm-hmm. uh, learning from the Indian example, outreach and, and uh, 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 awareness is a very key element. That's how you will bring the people together. There are enough uh, 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 things that are that are beneficial to the community, to the household owner, but it has to be communicated well. And number two, the whole transaction cost has to be yes, yes, so yes, yes. Once they start seeing what what is happening and and the benefits that will accrue to them, right from uh, going away from uh, traditional biomass based energy to a commercial energy, correct, which is green and clean, and most importantly, if you if you look at the fact that in Africa in particular, where the transmission infrastructure is, is yet to be built, yeah. and you don't need billions of dollars to build to build transmission uh, infrastructure because you are having. Uh, generating and consuming energy right at the load center. So I think the, it, it's necessary as a part of the TA to package this for each stakeholder what is what is there in it for, for, for them. Saurabh, I want to thank you for being here and for sharing your thoughts with us. I think the issue of digital platforms is absolutely important. As the issue of skilling, we will get communities with us if we build these kinds of enabling infrastructure together. Many, many thanks to all of you and many thanks to Saurabh for joining us today at this. Thank you, Thank you very much.